So for the past couple of weeks, I've been really nerding out on studying uh, the robber barons as they were, you know, sort of not so politely referred to. But, you know, the Carnegie's, Rockefeller's, uh, Vanderbilt, um, J.P. Morgan, right? The, the sort of industrialist that was post-Civil War, Industrial Revolution types, Ford as well, that completely revolutionized America, put America on the map economically, built giant empires basically out of nothing. Uh, these were fascinating characters. Now, I know, obviously, ethically, oh, they were bending the boundaries of not breaking them all over the place. Okay, so let's not get it twisted. I'm aware of some of the, the schemes that were uh, used to build their empires, right? Um, sometimes uh, staying within the bounds of the law and other times obviously skirting right on that line or just going past it, right? So, but let's not worry about that in this video. That's not really what I wanna focus on. The one thing that I've been noticing as I've been studying these guys' lives and how they've really um, just revolutionized uh, this country um, is something that also kind of ties a thread into sort of just general entrepreneurship. I hate that word. I really don't like that word, but just working for yourself. Um, I, I don't like it because it's so overused and there's too many people thinking they want to be an entrepreneur when that's not actually a job. There's no job out there called I'm an entrepreneur. That's not a profession, okay? You can be a plumber. You can be a uh, some sort of a craftsmith. You can, you can do a craft or something like that, but there is no entrepreneur out there, okay? There's just people that start their own businesses and do well at it. So there's a little bit of this kind of weird culture around that word that I'm really not a big fan of. But if you're watching this channel and you're you're interested in doing music licensing full-time, then you are on that path to becoming your own boss, okay? You are no longer interested in selling your time for money in terms of being an, an employee, right? Uh, the nine-to-five life where you show up at a certain place every day, Give your time, give the best time of your day, basically your most productive hours, and then when you get home, you're exhausted, you're you're kind of you dragged down a little bit, and you don't have as much creative energy um, as you did when you were at the job. Okay, so if you're watching me, you're probably interested in getting away from that lifestyle and more into a sort of entrepreneurial, self-employed, uh, work for yourself, be your own boss, right? I, I prefer those kind of uh, those kind of terms for it. And that's what you want to do, right? And you know that music licensing is, is a very viable and realistic path for you to actually do that and not just hope and wish you get signed by some label or some publishing company and they'll take care of all the work for you. Those days are long gone and it's dwindling more and more as time goes on, as you probably noticed. But if you want to go that path and be your own boss, um, there's one fundamental thing that you are gonna to have to give up from day one until basically you're dead. For your entire career, you're gonna to have to give up this one thing, which is hard to give up. It's really hard, and it's hard for me still to this day. I'm 10 years into music licensing, and it's still hard for me to give it up. But the one thing that I noticed between you know, these robber barons and you know basically their, their uh, just ruthlessness ability to get past any obstacle that was placed in front of them is that they never complained about it. And they never went running to kind of just um, whatever, just complain about what was going on in their business. Even if it was somebody being unfair to them, somebody unethically treating them, somebody putting something in their obstacle, you know, uh, unethically buying them out, doing a hostile takeover due, due to a shared uh, delusion where they would print tons and tons of shares um, and make somebody buy those shares thinking that they're going to take over the company. Meanwhile, they're buying a worthless stock. I mean, there were so many crazy things that got done back then. And even though many of those obstacles put in their way was not their doing, the one thing that either would ruin them or keep them afloat and have them bounce back and, and sort of reclaim their power in their industry is they would take responsibility for that, right? They would not go complaining to somebody um, and, and whine about somebody treating them unfairly. They would just own the fact that they need to fix it. Who cares who started it? Who cares who broke it? Who cares whose fault it is? They were above that mindset. That's a mindset of um, basically the employee. The employee can sit there day in and day out and bitch and complain about the boss. Oh, the boss doesn't know what we're doing. The boss is an idiot. The boss doesn't know how to do this. If I was running this place, of course, every employee seems to know how to run the company better than the boss, right? And that's what they basically get to have is they get to have that sort of well, it's not my fault if things aren't really working out. My, you know, my supervisor is a jerk or my, my boss doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, there's a certain amount of comfort in be, being able to do that, right? To always know that it's not really up to you to solve the problems of the company. That's really for the management, the CEOs, that kind of thing. They're the ones responsible for that though, right? 
So you get that as an employee, but you also are the employee, right? So that's the trade-off is you get to complain, but you stay at the level of the employee. Now, if you're willing and ready and able and at least cor courageous, I guess, enough to realize that it's okay to not have to worry about who to blame and who should you complain to and all this kind of stuff, but just accept the fact that you can you can fix problems and it is your job to fix problems if it's your business and if, it, if you are the boss in your own company and that's what you would be in the music licensing industry. Yes, you have to serve a library. Yes, you have to serve a music supervisor, but every company, every CEO, every you know multimillionaire or billionaire uh, still has to serve their shareholders, their customers. There's still somebody everybody is serving. Okay, so don't get it twisted thinking that you suddenly work for yourself and like you have nobody to answer to. Nope, nope, nope. You will have more responsibility. You have actually have more to answer to. But that's the trade-off that you're making is that you are now the responsible one in the equation. You don't get to go complain to people if something goes wrong. Even if it's somebody else's fault, somebody else screws you over, this happens, that happens, you have employees and they're kind of, you know, not really doing what you want. It's not their fault. Yours. That's your responsibility. Your responsibility to either train people better, put in better systems. I'm really becoming a really great fan of efficient systems. I think efficient systems take care of almost every problem uh, in a business. So uh, exploring new ways to put in a more efficient systems to your production schedule, to making music. If you're not feeling um, you know motivated or inspired to make music, it's not anybody else's fault or responsibility, I guess, than other than you. That is your, that's your job, okay? So if you're in a, a day job right now and you're getting home and you're really, uh, you have no energy and you don't really feel like making music and you want more time to make music, you can sit there and complain and blame your boss and blame that you have bills and blame that you have mouths to feed and blame everything else and just say, well, that's why I can't get this done. That's why I can't. I don't know, rearrange my schedule, wake up earlier, go to bed earlier, eat better, exercise more, do something to kind of start to shake up my system a little bit, shake up my life system. Um, those that will take responsibility for the issues you're facing are the ones that will become the bosses and will become the ones that can be self-reliant and create a full-time income for themselves with music licensing, obviously with this channel, but in anything that you want to do. Uh, that's the one thing that I'm noticing. When I talk to business owners and versus when I talk to somebody who's an employee, I notice it immediately, or at least I should say good business owners who are going to be successful in the long run. There is a mindset and, a, and an attitude that you can just pick up on immediately, and that attitude is taking responsibility, right, and not blaming other people, not participating in gossip and that kind of a thing, right? These are people who know that it's really the buck stops with them and if anything is going wrong in their career or in their business they need to fix it right um and that, I, that's just one of the things that i wanted to share with you guys today that that seems to be a big major splitting point for a lot of people i know a lot of you are ambitious and you're ready to do music licensing but you still might be holding on to some excuses right and i hear this all the time well, they're not paying as much as they used to in music licensing or streaming, you know, the streaming sites, they're paying pennies, so what's the point? Or, you know, my favorite one is, no music libraries gave me a chance, they're supposed to give me a ch nobody owes you, if you know this, you know what I'm going to say, nobody owes you a thing in this business and certainly not in life. You get what you deserve, okay? So if you put in work and you put in effort and you consistently show up and you just don't give up, you're going to see those open doors. They, I guarantee you they're going to open up to you, but you just can't throw in the towel. You can guarantee that you will fail if you use those excuses and use them as a way to bow out of the industry, bow out of making music. I see it all the time, and that is the split, right? That's the person who does that, who's deciding, I would rather have my complaining and my excuses and blaming other, other people than having success. Success means you can't do that anymore. You can't blame others. You can't uh, you know, uh, excuse yourself for why you're not achieving what you want to achieve. It's up to you. You are the one who is steering the ship. So if you are ready to take the wheel, then you can really do well in life, right? Not just music licensing, but in everything in life, you can do incredibly well. But if you want to hold on to those excuses, you're, you're going to just stay at the bottom. That's just what it's going to be. And that's the major trade-off that you have to really weigh on yourself. And it starts... You, you make that trade-off before you make full-time income. I'll tell you that right now, that you don't wait until you have like you know full-time income with your royalties before you decide, okay, now I'm going to let go of the excuses. No, 
if you're on the path to making that your full-time income today, right now, I don't care where, if you have no music accepted anywhere, if you have like 20 tracks out there, if you have you know 100 tracks, whatever, you're just now learning about music licensing, today is the day that you have to decide that. You gotta let go of excuses and complaining if you wanna go to that next level of success. Um, so anyways, without repeating myself again, that's all I'll say. If you found this useful or motivational or inspirational, please make sure you leave a like down there. I think it's down there. Uh, click that bell uh, notification to make sure that you get all notifications of me when I go live, when I upload uh, videos. I know a lot of you guys are subscribed, but you have no idea that I'm doing stuff because you haven't clicked that little bell right down there, right down there. Make sure you click on that and please subscribe. That way you'll get these uh, videos all the time and share this video with another producer or musician, um, with somebody that you know might maybe you know be able to benefit from this. I don't want to say you know <laughs> you want to know somebody that or send it to somebody that you know complains a lot. But read between the lines. If somebody needs a little bit of a kick in the right direction, this could be a, a little bit of that um, that message that might help them get out of those really bad habits and more into uh, effective, productive ones.